So let's think back to the functions we used in example one. So using f of x and g of x from there, let's find the following. So f of g of two. So what we're saying is g's output of when we plug in two is now the input of f. Here's how I like to lay this out just to make it very clear. f of x said two times x minus three squared, right? So f of x function says two times input minus three squared. But what is our input here? Our input is g of two, right? Does that make sense to you guys? So now we just need to figure out g of two. Well, g of two, uh, g was five x plus seven. So that would be 17. So this becomes two times 17 minus three squared which is two times 14 squared, and 14 squared is um, 140 plus 56, so 196, and two times 196 is 392, I believe. Okay, so there's f of g of two. Why don't you go ahead yourself and pause the video and do g of f of 2. Let's see if they're the same, like we talked about before. We just flip it around. So remember, the g function, right, is 5 times the input plus 7. And our input is f of 2. So um, f of 2, we plug 2 into the f function. Uh, we actually get 2 again. And 5 times 2 is 10, plus 7 is 17. So guess what? 392 and 17, definitely not the same thing. Again, I want to reiterate, if I reverse this around, they're not going to give you the same result. Another quick thing you could add into this, just to use those other, uh, other ways of viewing this, in case this is more helpful for you, is just think we take 2 and pass it through g, and then pass it through f. So if I take 2 and apply the g function, I get an output of 17. And now that's my input into the f function, which gives me 392. And then similarly here, but we're applying f first and then applying g to that. So if I take 2 and apply f, it's 2 again. And if I plug that into g then, I get 17. So those are just two ways of tackling, calculating those specifically. Now, for our next one, we're actually going to find the composition as an actual full function, not just plugging one specific input in. And that first way that I showed you just a moment ago to tackle these is going to be the best way to think about those. Okay, so question four, basically the same instructions. Using f of x and g of x from one to find the following. However, we're actually developing a full formula for these compositions. So it specifically says in normal form, and I put the reason why. Remember, we use normal form to help show if things are identical when we're talking about polynomials, right? So the reason why I'm wanting to put it in normal form right now is to actually prove they're not equal. And if you remember, we stated that, um, well, we plugged in numbers in both directions and we saw the answers weren't the same, but we can actually algebraically show that if you reverse the, the direction of the composition, that the actual function itself is not identical, just overall. So I re rearranged this a little bit for myself because I think it'd be easier to use all the space here and here for these. So let's go ahead and start with this f of g of x, okay? So remember, g of x is my input into f. So we have to start with f as the overall function. And remember, that means two times the input minus three, all squared. Well, our input is the entire function g of x. So just think of it like plugging that function's name into f. But what is g of x? It's five x plus seven, and then minus three, Square. And actually, it might help us to <coughs> color code this for, for these two steps so that we remember we can see exactly what, what we did there, right? So f of g of x <coughs> means that I plug that in as the input. Now, at this point, all we've done what we needed to do. This is the composition function. But since we want to try to prove that these aren't the same as each other, let's actually do what we said and put it into normal form. Um, so this becomes 2, 5x plus 7 minus 3 is 5x plus 4 squared. And remember, this 2 can't distribute yet. We have to square this. So it's going to be 
25x squared <coughs> plus 40x plus 16. If you did an expansion box or whatever, if you're doing this on your own, then that's what you would get. And now we just double all that. So this becomes 50x squared plus 80x plus 32. And there's my final composition of f of g of x in normal form. So go ahead and pause, and why don't you try to tackle g of f of x right now and putting it in normal form. Okay, just to check our work. Remember, we put f of x as the input into g. So g says 5 times input plus 7, and f of x is our input, right? So let me just replace f of x with the actual rule. And luckily, we've already done the work for making this in normal form before. So we know it's 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. So if I multiply the 5 in and then add the 7 and combine like terms, then here is the rule in normal form for g of f of x. And you can clearly see that these two polynomials are not identical to each other. And again, we've reiterated that function composition is not commutable. If you remember the commutative property of like multiplication, for example, for numbers. 5 times 2 equals 2 times 5. We can reverse it. But for functions, uh, there is commutative rule for multiplication and addition. Um, and not for subtraction and division, actually, because if you remember with numbers, you can't 2 divided by 5 and 5 divided by 2 aren't the same. So some operations are reversible and some aren't. That's the lesson here. And for composition, we realize, oh, it's not reversible. Uh, let's look at a few more things with composition before we wrap up. Okay, so for wrapping up today, um, you can add this into our other list of side notes now if you want, or just make it its own. Uh, but there is a notation for compositions that is not the same as this. Uh, this f of g of x is kind of meant to specify a specific input uh, for it, or g of f of x. But sometimes you'll also see this notation. It's a little, it's a little circle. It doesn't, it's not multiplication. It's a little open circle, and I, some, it's f of g. That's just how you read it. Uh, sometimes we call this the fog and goth notation, so you can refer to that if you want. But just know that if you see fog, it just means f of g of x. It's just the, it just says the same thing. This specifically just refers to the function itself, and this one kind of specifically is for you know plugging in inputs. But I will use this more often, but you'll probably see this used, I think, in our book more. Um, last question to tackle for this lesson. Um, we see, we know that in general we've seen that f of g of x is not equal to g of f of x. But let's just say we had a function, let's just say a basic one, 2x minus 3. Can we find a g of x that this does work with? What we're saying is, if we're given a function, can we find another function that actually it, it, we can reverse the composition and get the same thing with? Um, a lot of functions we can do this with, and this is just getting our thinking going for future lessons we're going to be studying soon. Um, let's play around with this a little bit. Okay, to wrap up for the day, another thing you can add to your list of side notes here um, is just a new notation, actually. So we've used f of g of x and g of f of x to represent the composition in the two different orders. Um, you will also often see a notation, and they're equivalent. Uh, I call this fog notation, or goth. It's a little open circle. It's not like a O. It's a little open circle. And be careful, it's not multiplying. It just means the composition, okay? This one is meant, this notation is meant to specify like that you can plug an input in. This is just often used to refer to the function in general. But they're interchangeable with each other, okay? So if you see fog, it's the same as saying f of g of x, and then the same in the other direction. So let's move into one last example that's going to lead into stuff we're going to be studying soon. We've seen that it's definitely not true that f of g of x and g of f of x are the same thing. They are not equal. However, sometimes if we're given a function, we can figure out another function that it does work for. It maybe doesn't work for any two random functions you choose, but some functions have their own match that make this happen. So um, I've given you two functions that actually do work for this. Again, remember, most functions, they don't, but there is a function that will match a lot of functions, right? So this is one where you can actually do it yourself. Go ahead and calculate 
f of g of x and then g of f of x and show that they're actually equivalent. And then we'll just come check our answers together. Okay, so uh, I actually added a little side note here. So this generally doesn't work, right? But sometimes it does. So f of g of x, right? So g is our input, so 2 times input minus 3. So if you just plug along here, a lot of this stuff just like cancels out. 2 over 2, and then you have plus 3 minus 3, so that just equals x. And then same here, f of x plus 3 over 2, and then you'll see the minus 3 plus 3, a lot of this unravels, and that also just equals x. So guess what? This happens to be a pair of functions where the reverse composition is equivalent. So we're going to end this lesson just with the formal definition for composition of functions. Um, we've done everything we need to do, you, you know everything you need to know, but just some notation here is going to be important. Um, so for two functions, f and g, now notice f has inputs from group A and it matches them with the outputs B. And then g has inputs from B and it matches them to some other you know, outputs C. Now this is important because, if you remember, whatever comes out of S, F, needs to go into G. So it's important that we have this link where these outputs uh, match those inputs, okay? Then the composite function, G of F, meets these following criteria. G of F starts at A and ends at C. It basically abridges the gap. B is like the bridge between. So the comp composite function starts at A and then ends at C. And then we already mentioned this. G of f of x is the same as just saying that. Okay? So that's completely it for this lesson. Happy math. We'll see you next time.